You put me down right this minute. You crazy thing. You barge into my room at the crack of dawn. I told you I was coming to get to the crack of dawn. You yanked me out of bed. That's right. I yanked you out of you bed. You ever do that to me again? Do you hear me? I, uh, what is this? I get my mad and I'm cold. Do you or don't you want to know what I've been up to all these long, lonely nights these last few weeks? You've been wondering? Yes. Well, here. Well, I hope you didn't slip and fall and break anything while you were doing it, whatever you're doing here. You happy? See, Homer the Sailors. Uh, How was the honeymoon? Oh, yeah, the honeymoon. Well, that was, uh, that was okay. Yeah, you know, as far as honeymoons go, it was, I don't know, uh, perfect. <laughs> perfect. Well, I'm glad. That's what honeymoon should be, perfect. Mm -hmm. Nothing else in life is. Yeah. So, tell us everything that we've missed here in Landview. Right. Any earth-shaking news in Landview since we've been gone? Well, yes, I'd say that. The earth has been shaking. We were all so happy for you, Clint. Your son coming back like that, and you've given up hope? Oh, we've more than given up hope. We'd accepted his death. This is more than a miracle come true. Please uh, tell Vicky how happy I am for her, okay? Well, you can tell her yourself. She's in the office. Well, I could. Uh, but I don't think, um... Is there a problem? I have a teeny suspicion that uh, she's a bit annoyed with me. Vicky? Why? Apparently, she saw us at the waterside the other night when we had dinner. Vicky was at the waterside inn? Yeah. She was there with some uh, man. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> I met him, actually, uh, General Sloan Carpenter. Yeah? your tea? No, no, thank you. No, I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I I knocked and, and uh, then I, I heard you uh, shout and... No, what, what, I was shouting? Uh, yeah, and the door was un unlocked, so I, um... Oh, my God. I guess I forgot to lock up last night. I just, I was reading all this and I fell asleep on the couch here, I guess, huh? The highway patrol report? No wonder you were having nightmares about Sarah. Yeah. It's been a while since I've had one of those. I guess, um, reading through this kind of got to you, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it did. And, uh, my family, um, we had some real good news last night. Yeah, that always gives me nightmares, too. 
My nephew, Cord, it's Clint's oldest son. He disappeared about a year ago in the Middle East and was presumed dead, and uh, he came home. Yeah, out of nowhere, he just showed up on the doorstep. He came home. It's incredible, isn't it? That's amazing. It's a little close to home, doesn't it? Yeah. Made me start thinking about Sarah. And she's never coming home. I'm so sorry. Sorry. That's... No, no, don't. No, please don't. No, don't. Don't do that. Sit down. No, just sit down. Just relax, okay? I just wanted to go through all these police files again. You know, just... I've got to find the guy that forced us off the road, and I've got to make him pay. Then maybe I can put Sarah to rest. But only then. No, don't. Come on, don't do that, OK? Don't start. Don't what? feel sorry for me. I, I can't take I'm not. I can't take I'm it. not. I, I was reading through the files last night myself. Did you find something? Well, maybe and maybe not. No, no, what? Well, why don't you go get dressed and we'll go take a walk and then you can get that nightmare out no, of your no, system. No, 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 if you found something, I want to know what it is. I what? will tell you. Why don't you go get dressed and then I'll, I'll take I, you over there. No, no, where? What? Get dressed and you'll find out. So, uh, before you give us any of this earth-shaking news, um, what you got to do is you got to hang this thing from your ceiling. <laughs> Facing the door, it'll chase away the evil spirits. Well, that's fine talk from a minister. Well, actually, I'm the one who bought it, but not to keep away your evil spirits, but to keep you in good health. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, Dad, uh, where were you when the uh, rice hit the fan? What? At the reception, because we wanted to say goodbye to you, and, and you were gone. Oh, yes. Well, uh... I left early. I didn't think you'd mind. <laughs> well, it does depend on the excuse. Andrew, your father does not have to explain himself not to you. No, I'd like to tell you about this. Uh, however, I would like to keep it between the three of us. Not a word to your mother. Okay. I went to see Vicky. Uh, something happened before the ceremony that upset her. She was upset about us. Uh, uh, so I had to go and see what was going on. And, uh, well, the long and the short of it is, Vicky told me that she's in love with me. You're kidding. No. Nope. So what happens now? I don't know. I know I don't want to be lectured I'm not by le you. Huh. I'm not lecturing you, Dad. I'm just, I don't want to see you get hurt here. Yeah. Well, if I get hurt, I get hurt. Look, Dad, uh, Vicky and Clint. They got a 10-year marriage. They've got three children under their roof. They've got nieces, they've got nephews, they've got grandchildren. It's more than just a marriage. It's it's an institution. I know that, Andrew. I also know that a breakup of a marriage is a very sad thing, especially where children are involved. But it's also a sad thing for people to stay in a marriage when they've grown apart. Dad, you don't know that they have grown apart. Look, if Vicky decides to stay with me, I'll be the happiest man in the world, aside from you. If she stays where she is, at least I'll know I've tried. Um, is there anything I can do? Yes. Be happy for me. Please. <sighs> Clint, I need to discuss something with you, please. Oh? about the family. Clint, um, I'll get back to you with those statistics on... Uh, I'll walk home. you out. Uh, I'll be right back. Are you sure it was Sloan Carpenter that you saw with Vicky the other night? 
Well, no. I, no, I never actually saw them oh, together. So you're not sure? No, but I figured it out last night. Um, General Carpenter stopped by here to see Vicky. I don't know, maybe, maybe I shouldn't have said anything. No, no I'm glad you did. Uh, thanks, Lindsay. I'll, uh, I'll get back to you about those stats later. Look, I'm, I'm worried about Cord and Tina. Tina didn't call me as she said she was going to, so since last night I've been trying to locate her to tell her, number one, that Cord is alive, and also that he's in Atlantic City looking for her. I'm worried that Cord will run into oh, Tina no, and Kate. Don't worry about it. I mean, if Tina is half the liar that her sister has become, she'll have no trouble at all pulling the wool over his eyes. What is that supposed to mean? What it means is that I know... I know that you didn't have dinner with Tina the other night. It means that I know you were with Sloan Carpenter. It's cold here. Oh, good. Okay, okay, I know where I am. This is my favorite part of the land at Serenity Springs. Mm-hmm. This is where I told you I loved you for the first time. Ooh, mm-hmm. Over there is where we found the hot springs for the first time, right mm. by that copper beech tree, which is our logo. What in the heck is this thing right here, and what does all this have to do with you slipping out on me every single night? Looks like somebody surveyed some land here, put some stakes up. Hey, looks like maybe they, they're building a little something here. You're building a little something here. A house. Bingo, you got it. A house. Your house. My house? I'm building your dream house. And maybe one day, if I'm good enough, and I'm lucky enough, it'll be our dream house. <laughs> oh, are you glad you ruined the surprise? <laughs> This is awkward, darling, but I just had to bring you along for some moral support, and I'm so glad you could make it. <laughs> just kidding. Listen, I want you to know that my robbing the Palace Hotel is going to be worthy of your memory. It's going to prove that you are resuming your legendary life of crime, and it will get Moose Mulligan off my back. And then by pinning the crime on Renee Buchanan, it will get her off of Mortimer's back. Oh, calm down. I know you don't want me to hurt Renee, but there is just no other way. It's unavoidable, dear. Is there a problem, sir? Uh, no, ma'am. No problem. I, uh, I think I must have the wrong table. For what? Well, nothing. I was told there was a building inspector at this table, but... Yes! I must have the wrong table. No, you don't. I'm Mabel Smith, the city building inspector. Oh, how do you do? Mm. I'm Renee Buchanan's assistant manager, uh, Leon Bryant. Oh! Leon Bryant. Yes. Uh, how can I help you? Well, I need to check the hotel plans for an old structural problem. Do you mean the original plans? Yes. 
And any subsequent plans for any other renovations that they may have done. You see, details, Mr. Bryant. Every detail counts in structure. But the plans are locked up in the safe deposit box. Uh, Ms. Buchanan, the owner, is out of town. She went to Texas. Oh, I'm thrilled. Mm -hmm. So you'll get the plans for me, then? No, oh, no, not without her. But there would be a copy in the courthouse records. Oh. So I'll come back when Mrs. Buchanan returns from Texas. She went to Texas with Asa Buchanan, didn't she? How would you know that? Details, Mr. Bride? Details. I assume Lindsay told you I was with Sloan. Hmm? Thank heaven she did. Otherwise, I might have gone on in dumb, stupid ignorance, believing that you had dinner with Tina the other night. I might have been able to sleep at night, not knowing that Sloan came by here last night. Don't be sarcastic, all right? If you want to talk about it, fine, we'll talk, but let's talk straight. Oh, straight talk? Now, that's kind of ironic coming from you. Clint, if you want to talk, we'll talk. If you want to insult me, I see no point in staying. All right, wait a minute. You want straight talk? You know, I never thought I would see the day when... I never thought it would come to this. To you lying to me. You lied to me. Now, you wanted straight talk? There it is. Deal with it. You lied to me! You lied to me, and then you went out with Sloan Carpenter! All right, I didn't lie to you, all right? You asked me... Are you going to Sloan Carpenter's house? And I wasn't, so I said no. Then Tina jumped in entirely on her own and said she was going out with me. All right, I didn't correct her. That's true. But if you had asked me if I was having dinner with Sloan, I would have answered you very directly. Oh, come on. You are really splitting hairs now, aren't you? Why couldn't you just tell me the truth? Do you really want the truth? Yes. Really? Yes. I wanted to see you. I tried not seeing Sloan. It was a miserable failure. Not to be confused with the miserable failure of our marriage. No, don't say that. Because whatever happens now, we had a very good marriage. The sad fact, Clint, is that it has stopped being a good marriage. Just when did that happen, exactly? And don't, and don't tell me again about how it was because I've grown apart from you or, or about my actions with Duke's custody or how I reacted to the relationship between Joey and Billy Douglas. Don't you see all those things are true? You have changed. This is about you falling in love with Sloan Carpenter. You are not going to put this on me and me alone. You are the one who moved out of our bed and into the guest room, and to me that seems a pretty explicit way of saying that we are leading separate lives and we were living under the same roof only for the sake of the children. I am not going to go through this hell any longer. I'm going to put a stop to it. I'm going to put an end to it right now, once and for all. This is light. Fade of white. I have a grave. Wow! These are light. No, and I agree. It was a shocking announcement my father made, but I've learned my lesson. I'm not going to interfere with his private life. All right, at least as far as I can help it. That's very sound, <laughs> Andrew. Wish my mother would take her cue from you. Why didn't she say how long she's going to be away at this spa she ran off to? Yeah, I'm surprised she's not basking in the glory of Blair's downfall. I wish Blair had told us where she'd gone. I mean, she must be devastated that she's lost her jewelry company in the divorce, and... I can't offer her my support. Sweetie, you know, Blair said she wanted to leave town. I think she wants to cut ties, all ties. Well, then, that brings up the unpleasant matter of my employment. Blair's losing her company means that I'm out of a job. Uh, you can always be a pastor's wife, huh? Very funny, yeah. very funny. Well, welcome back, you well, two. Well, Virginia. Oh, thank you. Hey, you want to please sit down and join us? Oh, no, 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 thank you. I'm with a friend. I just stopped by to say hello. Hi. Cassie, I suppose we'll see you tomorrow morning. You will? Mm. 
Eight o'clock sharp. <laughs> Eight. Uh, for what? The Altar Guild. We're doing some repair stitching on the linens. Ah, oh, well, nice. Well, see you then. <laughs> Good. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Nice seeing you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the Altar Guild? 8 a.m. sharp? Pastor's wife? Does everybody know about my new job but me? Explain something to me, sure. okay? Mm -hmm. The police screwed up, right? Uh, well, I'm not. I'm not suing them. I'm making an observation here. The police screwed up. Uh huh. But don't go telling people that I said that. No, no, no. That's understood. But they let the, the the one eyewitness to that accident get away without getting his name, his phone number, or any or even the name of the trucking company that he's driving for? How does something like that happen? Well, accident sites are very chaotic, and both officers, Riley and Alan, each thought the other had gotten the information. Oh, fine. So they just committed, like, uh, an oversight, we'll say. How do you waltz in here, and you end up, you get the information? What is it? Is it obvious? Or... Art. Art. Hmm? Oh. So you got the name of the trucking company. Can you get the name of the, uh, the guy who's driving the truck, the huh? witness? Yeah. Oh. You can get his name, mm -hmm. his address, his phone uh -huh. number. Can you get his blood type? I mean, what, he run a hundred yard dash in in junior high school? It's a piece of cake. A According to of... Officer Riley's notes, that the, the trucker was a hazmat hauler. Hazmat? Hazardous material. State law requires that each trucker register his company's name and address with each county that he passes through. So all we have to do is call them, they check the log, and then we have his name and address. So conceivably, we could be in touch with this guy, like, today. Well, could be. And he could tell us everything about the driver who forced me off the road. Maybe. Maybe. Wait, maybe. no. No, maybe he's a lot closer to what we want to know than, like, beats me. Huh? <laughs> huh? Oh. oh. Well, well, well. We all have our special ways of handling grief, don't we, though? Well... You better work. Yeah, just a minute. We gotta settle some things, General. Well, you look a little surprised, General. That you'd kick in my door a little. Only a little. <laughs> well, good for you. Me, I'm a whole bunch surprised. I mean, after all, it wasn't that long ago that you came to me and... I mean, you came to me! And you swore up, down, and over that you were gonna quit chasing after my wife. But you didn't do that, did you? Your word doesn't mean a damn thing, does it? You know why? Because General Sloan Carpenter is a damn liar! Clint. Your husband's a little upset. I see that. You damn straight I'm upset. And I'm gonna stay upset. Clint, please, Until we get to... With me, please. We can talk about this in private. Oh, no, I am a true talker, Vicky. I am sick and tired of talking and not resolving anything. I'm staying in this room until we get this thing settled. And when I do walk back through that door, there's only going to be one man in your life. Just one. Do you hear me? I mean, do you understand that? but do you always go poking your nose into other people's business? No, no, it's okay. It's okay, Nora. I don't owe you any explanations, and neither does my lawyer. Ah! It dawns. She's your lawyer. Yes. Nora Gannon. Any relation to Hank? Yes, actually. This is Alex Olenoff Hesser. Oh! Mrs. Hesser. I am thrilled to meet you in the flesh. I have read all about you, of course, and I've heard all about your dealings with my ex-husband. Your ex-husband? Yes. We have whiled away many fine hours together, he and I. Mm. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing so close to the law, Alex? thought you were allergic. Maybe you ought to get out of here before you break out in a rash or something. That's very funny, Bo. I'm actually here on official business. Think what you want. I, um, I'm here to pick up the ownership papers for Georgios. Uh, you're the new owner of Georgios? Mm -hmm. mm. 
to know you were skilled in the culinary arts. <laughs> well, even though we were close, honey, I have a great many skills with which you didn't acquaint yourself. You're lost. Excuse me. What? Nothing. No, what? Nothing. No, come on, what? You're looking at me like I'm an alien or something. What's that? <laughs> I'm just surprised. That's all. That? That. The fact that Mrs. Hesser would be, I don't know, your type. My type of what? Your type of woman that you dated. <sighs> yes, the Palace Restaurant. Fine, I'll, I'll take a, two copies of this, please. I'm sorry, the county clerk's office doesn't have copies. Well, make some for me, then. The copy machine's broken. Fine, I'll take it across the street and make the copies myself. I'm sorry, you can't do that. I'll bring it right back. Do we have a problem here? The plans can't leave this room. So you expect me to wait for the machine to be repaired? You don't know me, honey, but I assure you, I wait for no one. And the kitchen will be right over there. Yeah. With the skyline. And then we're going to have the living room right up here. And that's going to have a big skylight. Oh. And we're going to have a bathroom right over here with a sauna and with a very small skylight in that one. And then right here, where we are, is the bedroom. With a skylight? Two skylights. Wow. My own house. And I never had a home. I always moved around so much. I always rented, you know. And I guess the the closest thing I ever had to having a home was right above my business. I had a little apartment in Memphis. Um, but I lost everything when they when they burned that to the ground. Me and my business both. You know what? Mm -hmm. You're giving me everything back. I love it here. Mm -hmm. But what? I didn't say but. Yeah, you thought it. I heard it. I did. I heard plain as day. I heard it. <laughs> Max, I, I I love this old copper beech tree here, and, and I just Beth? I I can't see tearing it down, you know. What? It's been here a whole lot longer than we have, and oh. I don't I just don't think I could live without. You know, Luna, um, it's a really good thing because it's going to be right there in the middle of your bedroom. It's already arranged. It's going to shoot right up through the ceiling, be right out there in the wind and the weather and all of its glory. <gasps> <laughs> Come on, do you really think I could destroy something with that history and beauty as a tree? Mm -hmm. I'm as big a sentimental sap as you are. <laughs> Day after day, you make those glasses of thick Metamucil disappear. Why not make them all disappear with fiber?